You find somebody struggling with immorality, suddenly life comes. And then he discovers that immorality is a response to a vacuum in his soul. Now that he has received that life, he discovers that the power of lust is broken. And he suddenly becomes excited about the presence of God. It's not because he was doctored into it. It's because he came into another realm. And the same thing happens in darkness. It's not only in light. Spirits usually sustain similar protocols. Most of us who are parents here, you know that some of your children or some of the people you see, especially the ministers, when we travel, we see strange things. Five, six years ago, most of my trips were on campuses. I talked to a lot of university students. And then when you come on campus, you find young girls and young boys that at home were very pious and very decent. They lived as perfect people. But when they enter the campus, suddenly they become different creatures. And you can't recognize them anymore. And most times when they are going home, they change again to that they are hypocritical posture. And they go home, their parents assume they are wonderful people. Meanwhile, some of these girls, when you begin to interact with them by God, you will discover that in 200 level they've had two abortions. Their parents are not aware. Meanwhile, before they came to school, early in the morning, their mothers woke them up, sat with them around 6 a.m. and advised them, encouraged them, threatened them, warned them. They heard everything. They wanted to obey their parents. But when they entered the campus, they discovered that they came under another energy. So, even though they received the advice of their parents, there is another energy there. After two months, they start feeling lonely. They start feeling as if they are not beautiful until a boy approaches them and tells them how beautiful they are. All their friends are talking to them about how they have found new relationships. And then they suddenly discover that the biology that brought them to the university, they are no longer focusing on the biology. They stay on the mirror and they are checking. Is it that my body shape is not good enough? And then they start buying clothes that they can't wear at home. The reason is because they've come under another energy. There's another life there. And so in addition to advising your children, make sure when they are going, give them priesthood. So that when they come there, they will carry their own atmosphere. If they don't have their own atmosphere, they will have that advice, but they will still be defeated. Because there's an energy on the campus. It's an energy of lust and seduction. It's an energy of violence. It's an energy of waste and destruction because there are demonic princes there. This is why you see that nowadays we don't only send children to school to study philosophy and biochemistry. We also have campus fellowships. We also have churches to make sure that we contend with the spirit of that territory because a civilization will arrest your heart. Either of God or of darkness. And so what we are saying is, the moment the joy of the Spirit comes, what it's trying to do is to awaken you to another world. And so corruption may be all over, not you. Iniquity may be all over, not you. Not because you are so disciplined. Yes, discipline is a part of it. But in addition to discipline, life will insist. I didn't sleep last night because I was disciplined. I slept because when it gets late, life will make sure that I sleep. And I didn't wake up this morning because I'm disciplined. When the day breaks, after a while, if you don't wake up by discipline, life will wake you up. I don't eat food because I'm disciplined. I eat food because there is a monitor in my, in my, in my system called hunger. After a while, no matter how I try, one day, two days, on the third day I will say, give me water. Give me water. Because life will insist. It's stronger than discipline. It's a civilization. And the first way God activates life in your soul is through the joy of salvation. Because there are many things that will take your attention. House rent can take your attention. Lying, iniquity, corruption, evil can take your attention. But when the joy of the Holy Ghost comes, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, he said, The joy of the Lord is our strength. It brings you into another world. And then I said, when that happens, then the law of the spirit of life is also activated. The law of the spirit of life is what empowers your spirit man to be able to walk without corruption. So you now discover that you are in the world. 
but you are not of the world. Because you no longer live by your choice anymore. You live by the choices that God makes for you. Because you have come to discover that what He chooses for you is better than what He will choose in a thousand years. And so sometimes when your will is at variance with His will, you will drop your will and choose His will. For those of you who know what is happening in the Western world today, it's so terrible. Today, in the Western world, children of four and five years, they tell them to choose the sex they want. A child who cannot determine the school he or she goes to, a child who cannot provide for his or her own feeding, you now tell the child to choose. And so the child can wake up and say, I don't like girls, so I'm not a girl anymore, I'm a man. You who is the parent, there's nothing you can do. If you try anything, they'll take that child away from you. And that child is gone forever. Meanwhile, this is also a world where if you hit your son and they hear, even if he doesn't report you to the police, if he mentions it and his teacher hears in school that you hit him, the teacher is under oath to report you to the authorities. If the teacher doesn't, if the authorities discover, both you and the teacher will be charged for criminal offense, for hitting your own child. Your child can wake up at the age of 16 and say, I feel like having a boyfriend, and I feel like sleeping with my boyfriend. You cannot come and say this is fornication. Because in that world, immorality is now exercise. And if your child desires it, there is nothing you can do. So if you leave men unto men, they will destroy themselves. You think that's a civilized world? They have become so civilized that they are now backward. Because the wisdom of man is foolishness. You see crazy things happening, there is nothing you can say. If you even, if you like, be preaching the scripture, there are certain things you can't say. If you say it, they say you are intolerant and you are causing crisis in society. And they will take your license from preaching the word of God. That means even preaching the word of God now, you don't have the right to do it. Government can dictate for you how to preach. And if you don't preach how they want, they will stop you from preaching. A word that is bastardized by iniquity. The reason is because men live according to their desires. We were not called to live according to our desires. We were called to live according to what God determines for us even before we were born. And we were commanded to love it because that's the best for us. That's why when I teach on marriage, I tell people, it's not written anywhere to marry who you love. You are rather commanded to love who you marry. Because love is a God. You see young people show up and say, I love him, I love him. A godless man who has no destiny. I love him, I cannot do without him. And they didn't write it. Who told you that you should marry who you love? If the person God chooses for you, you love him. That's good. But whether love or no love, you marry because that is the will of God for you. When you find the will of God, you begin to train your emotion to align with the will of God. So when we are joining people in marriage, we don't ask, do you love him? We don't join people based on emotion. We join people based on covenant. And so when God is prosecuting marriage, the marriage contract is based on the covenant of God. It's not based on your feeling. If it is based on your feeling, the moment you love him, you are married. But God will not recognize that emotion until you follow the ordinances of the kingdom. Because when you follow, as you get married, after five years, you will discover that thing you are feeling is no longer there. You now discover that feeling is for six months. When you come back from honeymoon and she becomes pregnant, the shape will change. Those things you were looking at that led you into the marriage, you discover they are not part of the contract. And even if the man you married with a, a, a big chest and a slim tummy, after 10 years, you will discover that there are so odd, many layers of the tummy that you didn't see. The woman you saw that was walking like this, after 5 years, you will discover layers that you didn't see. So at that point, even if you stop loving, you will still keep marrying. Because the covenant is not based on emotion. It is based on the oracles of God. And so, 
When God begins to train you in life, what He will do is that He will introduce the law of life. The law of life brings you to that point where, like Jesus in Gethsemane, He will say, Not my will, but thine. Because you have come to understand that His will is superior to your will. Now, you can choose your own will. But if you choose your will that is not in alignment with His will, you will find the repercussion in eternity. The world that does not change. And so when men begin to grow, they will discover that they will begin to learn to choose the choices of God. And when you do that for the world, I said the third thing that happens is that He will open you up to His world. That's when discernment is activated. You will no longer see after your sight. And you will no longer hear after your ear. You will function by the frequency of another world. That realm will now open to you. That's when you become a wise man. A wise man is not a man that has facts. A wise man is a man that can peep into the crystals of the spirit and can determine what God is doing part time.